Hello friends, welcome back. <clears throat> Today we're going to use D3 max and D3 min functions to find minimum and maximum values in a data set. So D3 method domain and range set the information for your scale based on the data. There are a couple methods to make that easier. Often when you set the domain you'll want to use the minimum and maximum values within the data set. Trying to find these values manually, especially in a large data set, may cause errors. D3 has two methods, min and max to return this information. Here's an example. Here we have some uh, data, uh, example data set as a constant, and then that's an array with a new number of integers inside of it. Um, if we go d3.min and then pass in the data set, of, which is equal to this array, um, it's going to give us the minimum value, which in this case is six. And here, they're passing it in, <clears throat> but it's d3.max, so it's giving us 234, which is the maximum of the integers in this array. So a data set may have nested arrays like x, uh, y coordinate pairs that were in the scatter plot example. In this case, you'll need to tell D3 how to calcul calculate the maximum and minimum. Fortunately, for both min and max methods, they callback functions. In this example, the callback functions argument D is for the current inner array, and the callback needs to return the element from the inner array, the x or y value, which uh, over which you want to complete the maximum or minimum. Here's an example of how to find the min and max values with an array of arrays. So here, very similar situation, we're passing in an array of values, but instead of having simple integers in here, we're having an integer within each one, or an array within each uh, point of the array. And then within that point, there's two integers. And so here we wanna say, we wanna return the smallest number of the first elements. So we pass it in here, and we're using an arrow function, so we're saying the minimum value of x is equal to d3.min, and then we're saying, passing in the location data, so this is the array that we're trying to sort, so it's in the same format as this, because this is the array, and this is the array we're sorting. But then, whereas here we're only passing in one parameter, here we're passing in a second parameter, which is simply a callback function, and we just say, um, we're, what are we looking for? We're looking for well, with each iteration, we're saying setting this to D, and so we're saying D at position zero. So that's position one right here. And then it's position six, because uh, the next one, D, when we're at position one, we're going to look at position zero, and we're trying to find the minimum of these three values. So we should get one. Um, so yeah, the position data sh array holds sub arrays of X and Y and Z coordinates. Oh, cool, they're throwing it in here. Um, Use a D3 method to find the maximum value of the Z coordinate, the third value from the array, and save it in the output variable. Okay, so we want to use the D3 method to find the maximum value of the Z coordinate. So yeah, I think that they're gonna want us to set this, the output to that, right? So I'm just gonna move this ahead a little bit. And so what we can do is say, well, what we wanna do is, uh, I'm just gonna pass this down so it's a little bit cleaner to work with. Um, so we wanna set the output equal to that, right? So we can set the output equal to D3, and then we're gonna use the, uh, to find the max value. So we're gonna go D3.max, and then within here we're going to pass in our data set, which is position data, right? So we're gonna pass in this array. So our position data is here. And now what we wanna do is add a callback function. So I'm gonna originally do it in um, vanilla JavaScript, and then I'll do it in ES6. So this is vanilla JavaScript. And what we wanna do is say, um, we're gonna have a data point, right? So as we move through here, in this, oh, in this specific um, position data, our data point is going to be, initially it'll be this guy, and then in, in, secondarily it'll be this guy, and then thirdly, it'll be this guy. And so I think if I were to console.log, you know, data point here, we'll be able to see how we um, iterate through. So yeah, this is the first one. And so our position at data point zero is one, six, and two. One, six, and two. Our position at position one is seven, three, and nine. And at position three, it's negative four, uh, eight, and three. Oh, sorry, position two. Negative four, eight, and three. And so what we wanna do is return the max of these. And so in order to do that, we're just going to if we look here, you'll see that they're just doing the arrow function, so they're just returning this data point. So we're gonna return the data point at position two. 
because we want to uh, use D3 to find the value of the Z coordinate or the third value. And so because we start counting at zero, zero, one, two, two is the third value uh, from the arrays and save it as the output variable. So it's saved as the output variable. We're trying to find the maximum of this three data set and, and we're looking for the ones that are in the third position. So here we've got eight, negative four and three. Eight is the largest one and that's what we're getting. So that looks like it's working right. Cool, that's passing the tests. Now let's uh, refactor this. Um, now that we've got it working, we don't need to have the comments here. We know where our change code is. Um, yeah, and then instead of using this uh, vanilla JavaScript, we can use ES6, which gives us our arrow function, makes it a little bit tighter. If we run the test, that still passes. So that's just refactoring. Um, instead of doing the return with these guys, you can put them on a single line um, to, so it has, I think, what's called implicit returns. Um, yeah, we run the tests. That still works. So this is another functional way of doing this. Um, and then a lot of times people use things like they'll just say D. So instead of saying data point, we can say D. And that's going to get us down even further. Um, with ES6, you don't need to do implicit returns as long as it's on a single line. And so that'll get us a little bit closer. And um, yeah, that's pretty much as refactored as I think it can go. So what I had there with that big function is basically, exact. it's the exact same thing as this. Um, they both work. So yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoy this one. See you in the next lesson.